everyone, welcome to the channel. My name is Philly Beats You, and this is going to be the ultimate guide on surviving space-time distortions in Pokemon Legends Arceus. If you don't want this to happen to you, oh, oh, I heard a shiny sound. Oh, oh, shiny Breezel, 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 Breezel. Okay, Pokeball, Pokeball. Throw, 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 throw. And we're good. Ah! And I suggest you really pay attention to this video because we're going to be going over all the rare Pokemon, the items you drop, and I'll be showing you examples of how to be a pro in each of the zones in this video. So if you enjoy content like this, make sure to hit that like button and hit that subscribe button down below. It takes you a second. Just hit it real quick and leave me a comment down below of which space-time distortion location is your favorite. Without further ado, let's get into the video. In order for space-time distortions to start appearing on your map, you must beat Cleaver. After you beat Cleaver, they can show up at any time randomly on any map. I'm going to be going over the items that you can find in the space-time distortions, and if you need to go to any section in the video to watch, Please look at the timestamps down below so you can jump to the appropriate section depending on where you are and the strategies that you can take in order to do them. I'm a very aggressive player, so I stick with the very aggressive strategies because they are the easiest to do. Here are the list of items that you can get from these space-time distortions. You got Stardust, but you never want to sell this. Do not sell Stardust no matter what. I'm going to talk to you about a recipe that you can craft. Star pieces can drop. You can sell those for good money. Nuggets drop. I think they sell for 10k. Then you'll see a bunch of these red shards, blue shards, and green shards. These items are going to be the most common drops in a space-time distortion. Now, there's going to be a crafting recipe that you can buy from the crafting guy in town where you can take all these shards and combine them with stardust to create a star piece. So that's why you want to save your stardust so you can make more star pieces and sell that for more money. You also can get Water Stones, Thunder Stones, Fire Stones, Leaf Stones, Shiny Stones also drop from here, Dust Stones, Dawn Stones, then you got the Protector so you can get your Rhyperior, you got the Metal Coat so you can add it to your Scyther and get a Caesar or a Metal Coat to Onyx and get Steelix. You got the Upgrade and the Dubious Discs to evolve Porygon into Porygon 2 and then Porygon Z. You got the Reaper Cloth, the Razor Claw, the Razor Fang, Electrorizer so you can get Electivire, and a Magmarizer so you can get Magmortar. The Linking Cord is really cool because you can get Pokemon to evolve that you used to have to trade without trading at all. So just get a Haunter, put a Linking Cord on it, and you can get a Gengar. A Black Augurite is used to turn a Scyther into a Cleaver. And the Comet Shard, which is the most expensive item that you can sell to a shopkeeper. This is going to be a lot of money. So if you're able to find these, go for it and just sell that right away. If you don't need any of these items and you just have so much, you can sell them too. By the way, I'm going to be sharing links for all of these things mentioned in the video down in the description below. Now, there are two groups of Pokemon that spawn during these space-time distortions. The first group you're going to notice when we enter in are going to keep constantly spawning and despawning. The second group of Pokemon you're going to notice spawn would never go away. They're just going to remain in there until the end of the occurrence. So for the Obsidian Field Lance, here are the Pokemon that you're going to find that constantly spawn and despawn. You got Haunter, Lickitung, Ursaring, and Onix with the highest percentages of spawning, followed by Licky Licky, Eevee, Toxicroak, Steelix, Gengar. Steelix and Gengar are like 1.83% of showing up. And then you got Leafeon and Sylveon. So you do get evolutions that spawn in this area. And then all the Pokemon we just mentioned here all have a chance to have their alpha variant spawn, but that's going to be a 0.18% chance. So that's a less than 1% chance of that Pokemon becoming alpha. So if you do see an alpha version of the Pokemon you want to catch, make sure that you grab them quick because they will eventually despawn. Like Alpha Gengar is huge and it is awesome. Now this group of Pokemon here are the rare Pokemon that spawn in the space-time distortions, but these guys will never despawn when they appear. They're only going to despawn when the space-time distortion ends. You got Sneasel and Weavile coming in at 89.29% for the Sneasel. So you can see a lot of Sneasels here. And the Weavile is going to be at 8.93%. Now you're only going to be finding the original forms of these Pokemon here. This Sneasel only exists here. In the game, there's going to be a new form of Sneasel, but it will not appear in the space-time distortion. And you have a 0.89% chance within this pool of Pokemon of having these two spawn alpha. So if you're able to get an alpha Sneasel or an alpha Weavile, I suggest you definitely catch these. Now let's go over to the Obsidian Field Lands and let me show you how to handle a space-time distortion here. Now when a space-time distortion appears in the game, it'll show up on your map and you can look over it by saying, space-time is growing unstable here. If you can't visually see it on your map, that means you probably have to travel a little bit further to get to it. And as you can see, before a space-time distortion even begins, it's like a very light color. And then as you go inside, you're going to notice the color change right over here. 
All right, there you go. And there's the rift above, and it hasn't started yet. So when it starts, all the Pokemon down below that are spawned right now are going to despawn until the event is over. So you have your Bidoofs, you have your Starlies, you got a bunch of Pokemon here, and they're just all going to go away as soon as it begins. So what you want to do before it starts is just hang out, just wait, or you can do other things and come in here. But you want to be here on time because once the event begins, it's going to be like about five minutes and it's going to be done. So some pro tips in the early game. One of the first things you want to do is when you enter a space time rift, you kind of want to see the borders and surroundings of it. Is it a mountainous one? Is there grass cover? Are there hills? Because there's going to be a lot of items that spawn in here and you want to make sure to pick them all up. Now, a big strategy that I like doing that makes it a lot easier to handle these space time distortions is to get all the items on the border, surround the whole area and run around and pick them up on your weird deer. After you do that, then you can start moving in and grabbing the items closer towards the center and then start focusing on Pokemon that you need. Items, then Pokemon I don't have, and also the rare Pokemon together. If they're alpha Pokemon, they usually become priority to me inside of the Space Dimension Rift if I don't already own that alpha Pokemon. Also, you gotta note that the Pokemon levels are gonna scale up depending on your ranking level. Also, if there is a shiny Pokemon that ends up spawning in here, like my failed Float Soul in the beginning of this video, ah! then you're going to have to catch it no matter what. You cannot save. It'll go away if you save. The game you Usually glitches out i know austin john plays had like a disgusting 12 hour glitch until he fixed this game and it's begun so what we want to do is start on the borders here if you see a rare pokemon i'm going to grab them right after so i'm going to grab my items first because items are money there you go hop on weird deer pick up all the items you can on the border okay sneasel we need that All right, so the border items seem to have been done. So we're going to approach the Sneasel here. And if you have dirt or spoiled apricorns or snowballs at the beginning of the game, you just want to focus on him and be careful of all these other Pokemon here. And once you stun them, you can use a Pokeball and then catch it. If you need any of these other Pokemon, feel free to go ahead and use apricorns. Now, the most OP thing to do is get the sticky globs. Of course, that's my favorite item in the game. Okay, so this is Alpha Onyx. This is a pretty rare one here. So I'm just going to focus on the Alpha right now. One, two, three, four. Okay, there you go. We hit it. And I'm going to keep moving on. So Alpha Pokemon are really simple when it comes to using your globs. It's the best ones to use. Also, let's focus on... Oop, I hit by him. Get those Sneasels. Hopefully you get a Weavile or Alpha Sneasel that shows up here. Okay, I'm going to start focusing on items in the center along with the rare Pokemon. One, two, there we go. And then use your Pokeball, Ultra Ball, and hit it from the back. I really don't have to look too hard for items now. I'm just seeing what spawns. If it's a common spawn, I'm really ignoring it if I already have them. If I don't have them, just go ahead and catch them by stunning them. But I do not engage in battle because if you do engage in battle, you'll be in a multi-battle. I'll give you a quick example of what a multi-battle hap what happens. Okay, ready? So if you do happen to engage, look at the top right. You're dealing with two Ursa Rings and one Lickitung. And your Pokemon usually cannot handle three of those Pokemon. So I am... Not going to get involved with that. Instead, I'm going to just catch them. As you can see, we now have the advantage of the zone. This is very important because now we're not running around looking for items. We're just trying to see if the spawns match up to us because we're done. We searched the border. We went on the inside and started catching rare Pokemon. I already got the Sneasel of the area, so this is pretty good. And we got one Alpha Onyx. Also, make sure to check grass. There's sometimes going to be items that are spawned in the grass that you don't notice. This thing is coming to an end really soon. It starts to get really loud. Let's just catch one more Pokemon just for good luck. Never mind, it despawned. All right, and, and that's it. The distortion is gone. So the Sneasel we got was an 89.29% chance of showing up within its own rare encounter table. So that's not too special. But over here, this Alpha Onyx was actually a 0.18% chance to show up within the space-time distortion. So these are really the only two prize Pokemon we get from here. Catching the rare Pokemon as usual and catching an Alpha Onyx. So here are all the common spawns for the Crimson Mirelands. We got Floatzel, Driftblim, Luxio, Eevee, Luxray, Heracross, Lopunny, Snorlax, Umbreon, and Flareon. All those and then their alpha versions which have a 0.21% chance of showing up 
within the alpha form. So if you need an alpha Pokemon and it does happen to spawn, you got to grab it quick because this full Pokemon, again, despawns. They will spawn and despawn. And the worst part is if any of them happen to be shiny, they're gone if you don't get them in time. Uh, the video that you've seen happen to me was the Floatso. So you don't want that happening to you. So make sure you catch things quick by stunning them. Now, the rare Pokemon that spawn here are basically going to be the Porygon line. Porygon, Porygon 2, Porygon Z. And it's one of the favorite ones I got from these space-time distortions. Now, there's another chart over here, and you can see that there's starter Cyndaquil is in this one because after post-game, this is the pool that will occur in the area after you beat the game. The only way for you to get a Cyndaquil early is for someone to trade it over to you, which you can by joining our Discord down below. Just imagine what happens when that 0.36% Alpha Typhlosion spawns. It's gonna be so great. And it doesn't despawn until the space time rift is over. So that's the best part about these specific Pokemon. What you wanna do is first go over to a camp, especially when it says that you don't have enough space in your satchel and you wanna make sure to empty out your space. So I'm just gonna get rid of all my stuff. Once you organize all your items and put away all the extra goodies you have so you don't lose it just in case, you're ready to go into the distortion. All right, space time distortion appeared. Items are spawned in the ground, so we're going to speed up and grab those items. First things first. So go ahead, pick up all the items that you see. Okay, so there's the Porygon, which is the rare spawn. We have the Floatzel here. We got Eevee on top. These are two Luxios. Don't care about them. And this is Alpha Porygon Z, so that's that's huge. That's a rare one. So I'm going to go ahead and one, two, three, four, five. And I'm going to go ahead and just go ahead and throw a, a Gigaton ball at that. I got I got a rare Pokemon. There it is. Porygon Z caught in alpha form. So that's already done. Sometimes if it's a rocky area, you might need to climb the areas. So just jump around. I think we got a majority of items in this area, right? It's looking like we did. It's very mountainy. This one's a little bit tougher. Okay, coming around here. There's a regular Porygon. That's also rare. So, I mean, if you need it, go ahead and catch it. If you don't, there you go. Another stun. Regular Pokemon, you can catch two. They're not too difficult to catch. Arion and an Umbreon. That's, that's pretty cool. So, I'm going to go ahead and catch this guy. And by the way, these are the only places that Umbreon and Flareon can spawn. So just like that, those two are going to be done. There we go. I mean, it's done. Nothing too crazy on this one, but that's pretty much how you handle it. And here are the spoils of war that I got from this little outbreak here. It wasn't too crazy. The best thing we got here was the Porygon Z. And this was a 0.36% chance of getting this. This guy, definitely worth it. And all these other Pokemon... Very common, and they had no alpha. Look, they're all just like, okay, <laughs> why you gotta smack talk us? They're just listening to my lecture. <laughs> okay, in the Cobalt Coastlands, you can get Kadabra, Rhydon, Skunk Tank, Carnivine, Mr. Mime, Eevee, Alakazam, Rhyperior, Vaporeon, and Flareon to spawn. And all of these Pokemon have a 0.17% chance for their alpha variants to spawn as well. You will not be able to find a Vaporeon Wild or Flareon Wild anywhere else in the game except within this distortion. For the rare Pokemon that do spawn, you can get Magnemite, Magneton, Magnezone, and you have a 0.61% chance of having each of their alpha variants to spawn. So I just can't imagine what a giant alpha Magnezone is going to be like. You're not going to find these Magnemites anywhere else in the game besides the space-time distortion in here. Now that you understand this table, we're going to go into the space-time distortion in the Cobalt Coastlands, and we're going to see what Pokemon may spawn there. <gasps> what the fudge, full odds? What the fudge? Yo, is that full odds, Machop? What the fudge? Hello? Get in the ball, baby. <laughs> Yo, full odds while I'm recording. <laughs> I am, I never will get tired of shiny Pokemon showing up in this game. <laughs> I can never. After waiting in the Cobalt Coastlands, we finally got. A space-time distortion to start to form. I'm also evolving this Machop. <laughs> hey, we got that shiny Machoke, baby. I'm going to be really focusing on the borders when picking up items because the way the rift is, it's easy to maneuver around. Then I'm going to be completely focusing on getting rare Pokemon. Of course, Magnemite, Magneton, and Magnezone. Those are big, and if you're able to get them in Alpha, that's even better. And we're off. We're gonna move pretty quick on the borders first because you want to get everything on the edges. 
Oh, there we go. I'll do this quick, too. Green shards, green shards. Link, linking cord. Okay, okay. There's an Alakazam. Nothing too crazy there. Picking the borders. But look, there's your Magnemite. So you want to grab that as soon as possible. So go ahead and stun that with other items. And everything else spawned. Okay. Then dodge if you have to. That's a, That was the, probably a really cool dodge. Going around. Okay, I think I have gotten all the border items. Yeah, I think we're good on border items. Now we're going to move a little more in the center. Grab the center ones. I'm going to try to get this Magnemite. He's alone right now. I think I was just spawning by him. Here we go. Go for the back hit. Nice. Okay, pick up anything in the middle. And just be careful for when things start spawning. Yep, there we go. There's another Magnemite here. We'll go ahead and get that. Need that for the decks. That's caught. So I believe we have gotten probably every item here. I don't see really any items on the floor. Oh, probably, if anything, they're in the grass. You got to angle your camera at a, at a certain way to see the ones in the grass. But And now we just wait for something cool to spawn. You got the common ones here that spawn. Okay, there's a Rhyperior. I can go ahead and grab that if I want. Nothing's too crazy on these. Now, what I'm wondering is if we're here... And we get rid of these guys quick. Is it possible to get more respawns faster? Maybe it is. I don't know. I could be wrong. I'm going to try. Just catch a bunch of these Pokemon here. There's a Mr. Mime. I wonder if this is speeding up the spawns. There's a Vaporeon. This is the only place that you will see a wild Vaporeon spawn. There's not really much to showcase here besides me getting two Magnemites. So that's all I got. And a Vaporeon. And that Vaporeon was only 1.67% chance of spawning. And the Magnemites were just 61.35 in its own pool. So those were guaranteed to spawn. Uh, but you know what? We came here and got a full odd shiny. So that's great. So no Magnezone, no Magneton here. But hopefully you guys have better luck than me when it comes to that distortion. This next table that we're going to be looking at is the Coronet Highlands. And here are all the Pokemon that spawn here. You can get Magmar, Dusclops, Octillery, Drapion, Eevee. Those Eevees are starting to not seem so rare anymore. Ambipom, Magmortar, Dusnor, Jolteon, and Sylveon. You will not be able to find a wild Jolteon, Sylveon, or Magmortar anywhere else in the game. And their alpha variants of all these Pokemon have a 0.19% chance of showing up. If you didn't beat the game, you're only going to have the fossil Pokemon show up in this area. If you do beat the game, you'll start to realize Rowlet's evolutionary line is also going to be found as one of the rare spawns in this area. You get a 26.18% chance of Rowlet just spawning, so that's really good to know in general. The Decidueye has a 1.31% chance to show up, but here's the cool part. Then you got the alpha variants of the starters that also can appear. So imagine seeing an alpha Decidueye at a 0.26% chance to show up. So if you need to get the starters, need to get the fossils, or just want to catch uh, Wild Magmortar, Jolteon, and Sylveon, this is the place to go in order to do it at the Coronet Highland. So let's go ahead, enter there, and see what we can do. Okay, so this next spawn is located in the Coronet Highlands. And as you can see, it's right over here. But the problem with this area is if we fly up, is that there's a lot of mountains in this spot. But here it goes. It's starting. So we're going to just wait for all the items to drop. And let's speed up the items as fast as we can. So I'm going to keep my sneezer open. And let's go get them. As soon as we get our items, we're going to focus on the rare Pokemon. Now we can get fossils here. We're going to be focusing on fossil Pokemon. Those are huge. Okay, Drapion, Apom. There's, there's Rowlet. There's Rowlet. There's the rare spawn. I'm going to go ahead and catch that real quick and keep moving. Okay, that's Alpha Eevee. That's, that's okay. That's big. Okay, so we're going to go for two. Oh. And, okay, hit that. Some, <laughs> and when you are taking damage, see, I don't want to die out of here. I'm going to just go ahead and just leave real fast. Or run to get some health. Recover a little bit. Make sure they don't see you. 
Wait for it to go down and get back in. That's what you got to do in this kind of area. So far. Oh, there's a fossil. There's Magmar. Nothing crazy yet. No alphas. Only alpha EV. So that was pretty good. And that's my first shield on here. Oh, and here's another fossil. And we catch it. Oh, there's Magmortar. You can only get a Magmortar actually spawning in this area. So why not while we're here? Oh. There we go. A snore. I don't want to get hit by that. We could catch those. If you if you really need a third evolution. All right, it's gone. They despawn so quick. What is it about like 20 seconds and they're gone? So if, if a shiny or a rare does appear, you do have to nail it quick. You can use regular mud too. And it's done. We had Alpha Eevee, which was a 0.19% chance of showing up. We had Mag Mortar, which only shows up as Mag Mortar in this dimensional rift. Otherwise, you have to evolve a Magmar into it. We do have our lovely Cranidos and Shieldon as well that did spawn from the Space Time Distortions. So we got both fossils in this run, and we got little Rowlet just sitting over here. Unfortunately, none of the rare spawns were Alpha, but you know what? We did okay. I think we, we pretty much got four exclusive mons that are available in this area. We didn't get any evolution spawning here. Usually there's a Jolteon and Sylveon, but we didn't get those to spawn. But yeah, that's, I would say, you know what? Not too bad. It could have been better. And we're going to move on to the next area. The final location for the space-time distortions is the Alabaster Icelands. And in the Alabaster Icelands, you'll be able to find Electabuzz, Celio, Scyther, Walrin, Rapidash, Pikachu, Eevee again, Tangrowth, Raichu, Electivire, and two Eeveelutions, Glaceon and Espeon. This is the only place in the game you will actually see a wild Glaceon spawn and a wild Espeon spawn. You have a 1.48% chance of Glaceon or Espeon spawning, 2.96% for Raichu to spawn, and a 1.48% chance for Electivire. So even getting those to spawn is going to be a little difficult. And for the Alpha variants, you're going to have a 0.30% chance on Electabuzz, Pikachu, and Celio. But then it's going to be a 0.15% chance for any of the other ones. Rare Pokemon is going to be Caesar for this area. And you have a 0.99% chance of getting Alpha Caesar to spawn. Now, if you're in the post game, you're going to have Oshawott's evolutionary line spawn. And the best part about this all is that they can also show up in their Alpha variants. You will not be able to find Wild Caesar spawning anywhere else in the game or Wild Oshawott's evolutionary line spawn anywhere else. So this is the hot spot if you're looking for these Pokemon. I just heard a shiny. That's a shiny. <laughs> Second full on shiny in this tutorial, dude. And it's begun. All right, so we're gonna grab as many items as we can on the border. We got some Stardust. Green shards. There's a Caesar. That's that's one of the rare spawns here. That's done. I'm gonna keep going because I don't need those right now. The other Pokemon. So there's another Caesar. And I'm gonna hop back on here because I don't want to take damage. Uh, okay, I feel like we did get the edges. There's another Caesar. These guys are just spawning like crazy. There's another one. is Raichu, Tangrowth, and Scyther. These are the despawning ones, but let's just say I needed a Raichu, for example. Whoa. Just gonna quickly just... That's it. And we got that Raichu. There's a Pikachu over here. It's not a rare spawn. Once it disappears, it's gone. You know you've done a really good job when you can walk around, you see nothing else, and you're just waiting for the Pokemon. Just a bunch of Scythers here. Nothing too fancy. If I want more spawns, I'm going to try to take these guys out. And the distortion is gone. Well, this is the showcase I have for this area. Unfortunately, it wasn't a very lucky spawn, but that was a great technique of how to do it in the Icelands. It wasn't too bad. It had the 99% chance of it spawning. No 1% alpha Caesar. So that is 
the Alabaster Icelands. Congratulations, you guys are now space-time distortion pros and you know how to hunt all these Pokemon in every single one of the areas within this game. You know all the rates of them, you know which ones are the rare ones, and you know exactly which ones you're going to aim for. If this video helped you out, which I'm sure it did, hit that like button, and please hit that subscribe button as I put a lot of effort into these videos. My name is Philly Beats You, thank you for watching, and I will see you guys in the next Pokemon Legends Arceus video. Take care.